That is the world's largest living bovine, the god, wandering the streets of the Nilgiris in South India. No, it's not lost. In fact, it has become increasingly common to spot this hulk-like herbivore on roads, farms and tea estates in Nilgiris, Kottagiri and Kunur. So is the case with Kodagu, popularly known as Kurg, where gods roam coffee estates and farms. India is home to an estimated 85% of the world's gaur population. The mighty mammal, also known as the Indian bison, is usually shy and maintains its distance from humans. But in parts of the Nilgiris and Kodagu, gaurs have now been moving out of forests and grasslands to forage in farms and live closer to humans. And to adjust and cohabit with their new neighbors, the animals are also changing their natural behavior. Like these gaurs, a lot of India's wildlife, big creatures and small, live beyond the confines of national parks and sanctuaries. They often share space with humans, which gives rise to situations of peaceful coexistence or conflict. Explore Monga Bay India series, Beyond Protected Areas, to know about the country's wildlife. During the late 1960s, uh, there was a major rinder pest epidemic, possibly 50% or more of the gaur population died because of rinder pest. And now, now of course the rinder pest has been completely eliminated from India. So the gaur population of this region has definitely increased several fold. And that could be one reason why gaur are actually moving out of the forest areas uh, into agricultural and settled areas or moving to higher elevations as we find in the Nilgiris. Another reason for the gaurs to make the move is considered to be linked to a plant invasion in their original homes. Over the past 15 years, we've had a proliferation of Lantana Kamara, this uh, very thorny uh, you know, shrub that has come in to the country. It, actually, Lantana came in a long time ago. And uh, this has uh, essentially choked the understory of our forest. Competitively, it has displaced uh, the natural grasses. Now, we must remember that gaur are essentially uh, it's a grazer. The gaur do browse on plants to a certain extent, but uh, eight, more than 80% of the diet of the gaur is grass. And therefore, since uh, a major resource for the gaur has gone down, it is entirely possible that gaur are now moving out of forests into areas where you have a lot of grass available. And very often you find that in agricultural areas you have a lot of grasses available. Male gaurs can weigh between 1000 and 1500 kilograms and females between 700 and 1,000 kilograms. And appearances aren't deceptive when it comes to gores. They are just as hardy as they look. They can feed on a wide variety of plants as compared to other ungulates, that is, mammals with hooves. And they can also survive on poorer diets when food is scarce. Gores forage in the coffee plantations of Kodagu that are often contiguous with forests. Here, they remain true to their shy nature and exit at the sign of human presence. But unlike their natural tendency of staying active during the day, they now move after dusk. And they often leave trails of crop destruction behind. The Nilgiris division holds around 2,000 gores according to an early 2020 survey. But the forests of the region are severely fragmented by tea estates, infrastructure and human settlements. As habitats shrink, these animals with wide home ranges wander into town roads and farms. And here, they have overcome their shyness to stay active both day and night. But this proximity to humans has also led to some unfortunate incidents. Five people lost their lives and 30 were injured due to encounters with the animal in 2018-19. I've been watching gaur here for more than 40 years. In the late 70s and early 80s, you see a herd of gaur, and they would immediately flee, uh, you know, at the sight of a human, or, you know, just getting a scent or whatever. Uh, but over a period of time, it's amazing that the gaur now are, you know, extremely tame. You know, they don't run away from you from a vehicle or, uh, you know, when they see you, even if you go on foot, for instance. What has made a difference is that. Um, 30-40 years ago, there was poaching of gaur. But poaching has been effective, effectively controlled now, especially in the last 20 years. And therefore, the behavior of the gaur also has changed. And uh, given that protection, animals adapt, they change their behavior, 
we are much more accepting of humans. What can be done to ensure safety for both gods and people in these areas? The process includes measures such as protection and restoration of grasslands and forests, gore population monitoring, and public awareness about the animal and the importance of keeping safe distances from it. While there are several reasons for the gore to shift base in the Nilgiris and Kodagu, the animal and humans are continuously trying to adjust to each other's presence in these regions. <laughs>